Welcome back traders, I do hope you've had a fantastic weekend and let's just look through the data first of all before we dig into these charts. Last week was pretty hectic with uh, Fed Day, UK rates, ECB rates etc etc. So let's just have a look at what we actually got this week. Very little on the US front. ISM uh, non-manufacturing uh, expected to be marginally better and UK services expected to be better, UK is a services economy so 9.30 on Monday could be interesting and then not a lot else um, rates That's the Aussies have said they are going to reduce rates nothing scheduled for here but uh, if they are going to do it then August a nice quiet August period could see them do that but it's certainly not projected here and UK manufacturing here on Tuesday expected to come from minus 0.8 to plus 0.9 so we'll take a good look at the uh, pound uh, US trade balance Tuesday and then we pretty much go very quiet for the US Wednesday UK inflation report right, that, that's big um, that could be market moving so we'll take a you know, again I'll be really focused on the pound and not much else once we get to that level not much else okay so let's start looking at the charts then I do apologize let me get this ready this is a weekly and daily charts and we are going to start with the Nikkei and this is bullish we've come off of this major support here uh, crashed into 570 and now we these are monthly pivots by the way that's monthly R1 topping tail but you know, that's two decent days off of that trend line and the 15 or 200 I would expect that to come back and touch 13,870 at some stage during the early part of the week and then possibly get back to 15,500 but uh, it is summer and volumes are light FTSE so we spent a long time in this box I actually I had a pretty low point count last week and I was, on Friday I did do two or three trades. I was literally scouting for um, small moves. I'll uh, we'll go through some of the issues I had in my trading in a minute. But um, let's look at these indices first. I mean, this weekly FTSE, a massive trend line here, and we have spent two weeks above it, one week sideways. So got a major wall up here, but. I would just, the fact we're above the trend line, I would buy 66.35 to see if we can go back and retest those highs up there, just on the 69. Now, uh, a weekly higher close, so it looked a bit like a hangman last week, but we've closed above it, so extremely bullish. This was really quite tough to trade at times, we just kept dropping and running up for three, the first three days and then selling at the highs so we spent three days going completely sideways sitting on this 15,530 and then two higher closes into non-farm payroll on Friday so I would look for a pullback to 15,600 to see if we can start breaking up through to towards 16,000 uh, RSI is high this is the issue um, you know, this is low volume, very sideways, not a lot of data coming out, so um, you know, we could just drift lower the first part of the week, come down here and then see some upward pressure in the second half of the week. But I have to admit, uh, ju judging by the sort of issues I had in my trading last week, it could be difficult to prize points out of this. This is the this is the pound US dollar. Um, we we came into this trend line, so we looked pretty bullish. Obviously, we had a massive area of resistance up here. This, this daily 200, four days of selling, and then Friday we just shot up. So Bank of England 
on Thursday was pretty disappointing, which is a slightly lower close. Uh, but now we have closed into 15,300 or just under. And the weekly chart is sitting with a hammerlite bar just on this major 50, well, 15260 area. Monthly pivot is hanging over us. Um, so that's a weekly pivot, I believe. I'll check that in a minute. 15375. So we're holding the weekly 8. We are under the weekly 21. So I would expect 15330 to go and get tested. Uh, so we're underneath that already. I would expect. 15270. I expect a drop down here somewhere to retest this support and then try to come back and take a look at that trend line at just under 154. But the data for the UK is expected to be good, so I'd expect to see some upward pressure. And that's quite that's a decent bullish engulfing bar there. And sticking to the dollar pairs, this is a euro. You can just see the weekly. Sitting underneath this, just under that 200, with a topping tail is short of the bottoming tail, and the weekly, a daily suggests that is bullish as well. Because if you look at the way in which we are, we've closed above that 15230, that's huge, that is huge. And if we can only break out of that, so we have it, we're compressed under this apex here we shuffle along and come down and retest the support we could break out to 15135 this week so i would buy the lows at 13240 to see if we can break through the high 13340 okay so i'm looking for 13240 break 100 points up plus right yen pairs now th th this is again let's just look at the sorry let's go back to the pound and just look at the, the hourly let's just start to explain why my point score was so low um yeah so we, we drifted lower here they plunged it underneath took it right up to the 50 ma dropped it May, took it back to resistance, dropped it, took it back to resistance, and, and did a little run. So, yeah, that 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 is that is definitely hard to trade. I mean, the if you were looking at that on the London session on the first, and you saw that close at nine o'clock, then you could have got a small move there. Otherwise, you know, it looks bullish up here. So I bought. I remember buying a pullback here, with that bullish close up there. Bought this 152, and then it just dropped, stopped out, and then here it starts closing higher on Friday. Decent move into non-farm payroll comes out and that shoots up. I wasn't trading it then. I missed this move here. I did start buying a pullback here, and a little move here. So it's a, it's a short point count, and it happens. You know, we're in summer. Don't expect too much. Uh, just let these markets come to you and wait until they set up. But it, it was, if your score count was low, then uh, join the club. This yen, yen pairs are looking good. Uh, pound yen has a hammer on this monthly pivot. There's a the monthly pivot on the daily. I am buying 150.90 uh, or I'd, I'd love to 150.70 is a cheekier price to get which which I, I'm going to hang out for 150.70 I correct myself to see if we can come up here and start breaking through these these areas up here. Euro yen is the same. I'm not put off by that potential um, pin, reversal bar, whatever you want to call it. I would be a buyer of 130.50. Nice weekly chart here to see if. Let's look at the weekly with fibs. Huge area of resistance. 132 is a massive. 50% fibs. 
big congested area over here which we which we kept popping up to 138 and then dropped but um, I think that is if we come and retest that 132 again I think that may give I like the way we're holding the 8 you know big charts that hold the 8 EMA and don't you know, the lows keep getting bull, are bullish Okay, so anything else I see? Um, Aussie US is extremely low, looking lower. That's a short at 90.50, but uh, I'm just standing aside. The pound Aussie dollar has been on a tear. I commented how bullish I thought this, this chart was, and we held 165.90 and we finished the week at. Uh, 17176. That is now a huge bullish bar on the daily. That is a buy at 169 on the weekly. Yep. Um, if you're very patient, just see if that miss decent support gets touched again at 169. But I think that is very bullish. And the US dollar yen was very similar, so I wouldn't look at that one. US dollar yen was very similar to the other yen pairs and a big move into the Asian period on Thursday, I think it was, and just left nothing for you unless you bought high. I think um, so. Wednesday night had a big push, and it, unless you bought high on Wednesday, it left nothing for you. On a Friday, it was just sideways. So, typical, unfortunately, typical summer periods. Oil. Bullish weekly. Let's put the fibs on this weekly. Um, huge area of resistance up here. And is there a case for the bears? Yes. We start closing under 104. Well, this is in trouble, and we could come down to 97.60. If that's your bearish, if you're bullish, I would buy 106 and look to see if we can get to 110. What is my preference? My preference is for the bulls. I think we're just waiting for the daily eight, which is down here at uh, 106. So I would buy 106. Actually. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, is something reversible. I've got to respect that bar up there. Massive resistance at 108.80. Huge. So I, I would wait. I would give it at least Monday. I would sit, stand aside on Monday, see where that hangs. But if we do come as low as 105.50 and hold, then um, I would definitely be a buyer and looking for 110. Well, I'm going to give that another day and let and see where the market wants to take that. Again, lack of data, we might just move sideways, sideways and get and get the opportunity to get in lower down here. And a little look at I don't often look at commodities here, which I think is a shame. So let's look at the beans. Ooh, that's nasty because I actually bought these beans here at uh, 1,200. They must have sold very late in the day. I think they have. I've got a small stop out on that. Last I looked at it, it was holding up really nicely. And they pulled the plug very late into the close of Friday. I'm going to have to stand aside because that is incredibly weak. Uh, let's look at copper. Um, that's held the daily, the weekly eight, but something of really struggling under that daily fifty. So I would not look to buy that one. Wheat. That's better than the beans. That is definitely better than the beans, but not great. We are, however, holding sixty fifth, six fifty. If we close above. 
four. I would I would buy that. Well, the, the weekly is not great. I'm gonna stand aside. I'm, I'm not. I haven't been stopped out of the beans. The last thing I want to do is get another stop out so quickly afterwards. So I'm gonna stand aside on that one. A um, little bit of a stop. Look at the stocks. Uh, Tesco's. Look at the bell. UK bellwethers. Nice V pattern down there. Very high, very decent close. I would expect that to start to get back to 380. I like that one. Sainsbury's. Not as bullish. Much prefer Tesco's. Tesco's have had the best results on online shopping. Uh, Morrison's. A little bit of a hangman there in the weekly. I would steer clear. Premier Foods. Sideways, Lloyd's has done well above the entry price for the UK PLC. Nice weekly. The 71 is a is a buy there. It's gapped up. General. Okay. Um, Barclays. Yeah, Barclays got a rights issue. That's a very t dreadful weekly chart. Well, look at this um, 50 and 200, uh, yeah, 15 200 EMA crossing. And if we start to close above 290, I would be a buyer of Barclays. US stocks, and um, let's look at Goldman's. Holding the highs, uh, if that breaks that high. That that's going to get. That's got another leg in it. Aquamerica, sideways to strong. Baidu, Whew, wow, beautiful round here at the um, 900 level. And we're currently just under one. Uh, that is huge. The three massive wiki bars that just blasted off. Apple is doing well. Lovely wiki chart. That's a buy at 450. Very high up there now. I would I would not go in that unless I saw 450. Lovely weekly chart. So we've got a long way to climb back to the 700 level. But um, yeah, give it time and that could start to move back. Alright, I uh, hope that helps. Traders round table will look at um, we'll look at the key pivots once again. We'll come back to the key pivots, particularly as this market has been so sideways and and proved to be quite tough last week. So we come back to the main pivots in these markets and we will look at the issues to do with being a consistent trader. Okay, I hope that helps and enjoy the rest of your weekend.